Welcome to Mitten Kitchen. I'm Amy and today we are making sourdough pretzel bites with a beer cheese dip. Join along with me. So I fed the starter last night. It's so bubbly. It smells so good. Go ahead and take a look at that. So this is what we're using today to make our sourdough pretzel bite. So I did make this before. I made this for a Super Bowl party and they turned out so good. I'm excited to make them another time and to have a beer cheese dip to go along with it. So first up, we are gonna take our sourdough starter. We're gonna take about 150 grams of this. and add it into our bowl. Looks so good. Next up, we're taking one cup of warmed milk. This is almond milk. After that, we're gonna add in 10 grams of salt. This will be really flavorful for the dough. After that, we're gonna go ahead and add in one tablespoon of sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and use brown sugar. I think that will give it a nice flavor. We're gonna add in some oil. I'm using olive oil. Let's go ahead and give this a mix before we add in the flour. Okay, after that, we're gonna go ahead and add in our flour. This calls for 500 grams of flour. Now, I use einkorn flour for all of my baking. It's an ancient grain. We're gonna measure out 500 grams of this. This is why I need to wear an apron. I'm terrible at wearing aprons. I already am messy. <laughs> okay, 500 grams. Made a little bit of a mess. Really need to get used to an apron. I actually did order an apron that I think I'll like better. It's like a smocked version, so it kind of goes like a cross back. I think I'll like that better. This is going to mix for about five minutes. Okay, so our dough has been kneaded. We can turn it off. We are going to go ahead and put it into a oiled bowl. I have it in a bowl and we're just gonna cover this for about two hours. Gotta get all those little last bits off. The dough looks nice and glossy. It's gonna be a really nice pretzel dough. The thing that makes pretzels so unique is you boil them and then you bake them. So similar to the bagels that we made the other day, um, this is a boil and bake as well. So the dough turned out a really nice color right there. And we're just gonna put it in to our other dish with some oil to let it rise for about two hours. Like it's a sticky dough, but it's not like a wet sticky, if that makes sense. It's just like a sticky, sticky dough. And so that will rise real nicely over the next two or so hours. Now the recipe says it should about double in size. I don't know if mine usually doubles in size, but it definitely gets larger than where we're at right now. So there we have it. Just gonna put on my bowl cover. I like these, these are from Marley, Marley's. My uh, paper towels are from there too. We switched over from paper paper towels to a cloth, I think late last year. And so that's nice and covered. We'll see this in two hours. So it's been two hours and our dough has been rising. We're gonna go ahead and start making it into our pretzel nuggets, pretzel bites. 
So here's what our dough looks like about two hours later. I'm gonna get this onto a floured surface and we're gonna make these into our pretzel bites. So I also have the water and the baking soda already going to bring to a boil. So these will be easy to be transferred. Look how easy that was to, for the dough to come out. I have nice clean hands. We should be able to get quite a bit of pretzel bites on this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my bench scraper. And they said just to like roll it out into like nugget form. And I'm just gonna chop it like that. Maybe that's a little too big. Maybe we'll chop it further because it will expand. There we go. That looks great. Now you can roll them if you want. And once this is boiling, the water is boiling, we can go ahead and put those in there. And we're just gonna keep going. My husband got this new bench scraper for me for our anniversary, and it's really nice. This is my first time using it, and I like it a lot. It's very nice. So I'm just gonna ball these up. The dough smells so good. And these will be really good with our beer cheese dip. Now that will come together really easily, so we can do that while these are in the oven. I love my sourdough starter. It is so fun. And it's about a year and a half old. I started it myself with einkorn flour. My husband is gluten-free, gluten-sensitive. Einkorn is not gluten-free, I just wanna indicate that. But it is better for gluten-sensitive folks because of the ancient grain and also sourdough is good for gluten-free, gluten-sensitive folks. So he's kinda of got like a double, double whammy there to help with that and we've tested this out with him and he's able to consume it totally fine no issues which is really great these are just so fun to make just really enjoy getting in the kitchen making something new something unique right like and what a fun little snack to have for the week or for like a party, like I indicated, we had this for a Super Bowl party and it was super fun. And I thought this would make a really fun video. So we got about two more rolls to do. The dough is very easy to work with. It's not sticking whatsoever. So I do like this, this recipe. It's a really easy one to follow because sometimes einkorn can be can um, be a little bit more sticky. And so this is nice. I've noticed that this recipe is doing really well with it. I'm sure with all purpose, it would be just as good, but this is great with einkorn. I mean, look at it, totally not sticking, really easy and malleable to work with. And there we have it. We have our little pretzel bites ready for the water with baking soda. So we're gonna boil these and then bake them in the oven. So we're ready and waiting for it to boil. Okay, we are boiling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these in the boiling water for like 30 seconds, pretty much. I'm just gonna plop a ton in and then count down from there. I've done this in the big batch before and it's gone over really well. So we're just gonna get them all in. Not all of them, but like, you know, a good chunk of them. Right? That should be good for now. And then we're just gonna 
going to move them around and count down for 30 seconds. You can see they're actually some are floating to the top, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to go ahead and get these out. and put them over on our baking sheet. See how they're floating to the top? That makes it super easy to identify that they are ready to go. And see how they kind of plump up like that? Just like the bagels did. Very similar. I've noticed that pretzels and bagels have a very similar approach to cooking. Sometimes when it gets this bubbly, it's hard to see like what's left. I think I have like maybe two more. It's like a search and rescue situation. You're like, ah, who's left in there? Oh, I think just this one. I think we are over, oh, I felt, ooh yeah, I got a nice and large, oops, that one fell on the group grill or the oven grate. We'll have to get that in a moment. We're just going to keep plopping them in. Maybe I'll turn it down just a tad so it doesn't boil over. Whew! Burn myself. Careful! Those bubbles are quite large and in charge. Okay, that's a good batch. That is hot. I really did burn myself. <laughs> So be careful if you're doing this as well. Wow, I really burned myself. That hurt. Ooh. Be careful. I'm going to use a spoon this time. Usually I use the spatula, slide spatula, but that's with the bagels, which are obviously larger. But uh, this is, look at how much easier that's spooning out. That is way better. Much easier, too. A little easier in the search and rescue too to quickly just determine who else is in there. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get these nicely salted. Now you would typically do an egg wash. I am out of eggs. So I'm just going to do a quick spray. And I'm using some of the flaky salt on top. So just a nice sprinkle. I like this flaky salt. It's really nice. <laughs> and it goes well with like focaccia bread too. Okay, I'm gonna pop these in the oven for 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and get started on our beer cheese dip for these. Okay, this is gonna come together fairly quickly. What we're making is a roux, which will be the thickener, is flour and butter. So I'm just making it like a small dip. I don't need a lot. <laughs> Um, just for this video, it'll be fun to make. So I'm not making a ton, <laughs> is my point. If you had like a big party, obviously make this recipe for that size. Next up I'm going to add is the flour. We're going to give that a mix. I probably added too much flour. Maybe we need a little bit more butter because of the amount of flour I added. So that's perfect. Perfect. Okay, next up we are going to go ahead and add in our beer. Again, I'm going to do gluten-free, so my husband can enjoy this. <laughs> you can do whatever beer you fancy, though. Okay, we're going to go ahead and give that a mix. This is going to cook off the alcohol. Okay, I'm going to start to add in the Worcestershire sauce. 
I love the flavor of Worcestershire. It's so good. I'm gonna then add in some garlic. I just have this that's already like chopped and ready to go. But you can use garlic powder too. I just, I like the real garlic. Okay. Next up is I'm going to add in some of the cheese. Actually, sorry. I'm going to add in some Dijon mustard. I'm going to turn this down. Look how quickly this comes together, though. So easy. I might, add, I might need a little bit more beer, though. It's a little thick. I'm going to start to add in some cheese. I have some medium cheddar here. Now, I would encourage you to shred this. I'm kind of being lazy. I'm just going to really like thinly cut it. it. Smells really good already. Who would have guessed? Flour, butter, and beer. <laughs> and garlic, right? And now we're going to add in our cheese. And then it also called for some mozzarella. So I'm just going to cut up some mozzarella real quick. We'll see if that's enough cheese or if we need some more. I also have some whipping cream here just to give it an extra creamy flavor. bit there. Cheese is melting nicely. Now that's why I recommend getting the black cheese versus already pre-shredded. There is a coating on the pre-shredded that makes the melt point a little bit more challenging than this. I'm going to also add in some smoked paprika. I love smoked paprika. Such a nice flavor. And this is looking so good. We just need that cheese to melt a little bit more and it's done. That easy. And just like that, we have tiny little cute pretzels. These were so easy to make and look at how good those look. They smell so good. So let's see if the beer cheese is done. The beer cheese is done too. Look at that. It's piping hot. But we made a delicious little snack here. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a try. I think they're gonna be really hot. I might burn my tongue. <laughs> Pretzels are so cute and tiny. They smell so good. Look at that cheese dip. Whoa. It smells so good and like beer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mmm. Wow. That is heavenly. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. I have to give you a close up of this. Look at this. Look at how good this all looks. We have our cheese dip. So creamy and cheesy. And this will reheat really nicely. So good. And then just look at these delicious pillows. And we just dip it. Look how good that looks. Yum. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen today. I'm Amy and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the Minton Kitchen. Have a great day everyone. Bye. <laughs>